back, I set up plants and like to make the whole uh, experience appealing, right? Mm. It's important. I mean, it's not absolutely necessary, but it does, it does add to it. You look great. Boom. <laughs> that in the background what is it it's like a squid right down it's uh it's beautiful isn't it it's gorgeous it's like this this magma squid throne some like aquatic cre creature from the future or something <laughs> my buddy <laughs> <laughs> How was your week? It was pretty good. A lot, of, a lot of good things happening. And a uh, very, very amazing Saturday night. Just fucking most intense spiritual experience of, of my life. Really? Yeah. Ooh, that's epic. And everything's different. Every, everything, everything I went through is worth it, and everything's different. But everything's the same. <laughs> yeah interesting what are some of the if you well if you want to share what what were the coldest notes of it of the experience well what do you think you know completely leaving my body going on a journey that words can't describe you know verification no doubt complete support you know God consciousness, my, you know, just utterly mind blowing. And then coming back into reality and sort of coming in and not, and being able to do so in a, in a condition that really wasn't set up for what occurred. But it's, mm. but it's the beginning of going, okay, this is how we can do it. But we guess, you know, you got to go from a social situation into a, into a ceremony. And everyone there knows it's a ceremony and everyone there is participating as if it is a ceremony. Very different. I, I mean, I can just go places that, fuck, oh, man. I mean, hello. <laughs> hello. It's so much fun. It's beautiful. Nice. How about you? You look great, too. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I've been good. We did a, um, I created this, this little collective with a couple of my friends called the Creatrix Collective. Right. And we had our first like um, remote live jam on Zoom with 38 people, and it was like meditation, dance. Hey, Jordan. Hey, Jordino. How's it going, guys? Good, good. How are I'm you? Sorry. I'm doing well. How's things on your side, Elisha? Very good. Excellent. Bad fucking pass. Fantastic. So, how do you, what do you guys, uh, you guys got a theme for the week or something? Or uh, I've got a theme on my side. Okay. So, I this is actually my first... Um, I extended the last cycle to last six weeks long so that I could arrive because this week is the start of a new 28 day cycle. Right. Like this, right. Right. So this is the first time that I'm synced up with the cycles that the cycle templates that you lined up in terms of dates. Okay. So, um, for this 28 day cycle, my, the intention that I've kind of put as the theme is activating balanced attunement nice. and so we go group personal one-on-one -on -one and community and each one of those has a subgroup of activating balanced attunement and the first is gentle glowing acceptance and uh, and it's interesting to see that intention instantly kind of like light up as an essential thing to practice so also it's been really helpful to expand my ability to balance my interactions already 
Um, so for the group space, gentle, glowing acceptance. And for next week, the sub theme is an aptitude for forgiveness. The third week for the one-on-one -on -one space is a reminder of ease. And for community space in the fourth week is a play of grace. Okay. So we're going into the gentle glowing acceptance of the group space? Yeah, the group space says for this week gentle focusing on gentle glowing acceptance as a component of the overarching theme which is activating balanced attunement okay one, one thing though I, on the map that i got here we're <laughs> i have we're going into personal space oh that's like we're in personal space right now right yeah I, i'm okay to shift that I, um I'll, I'll let you, I, I want you to make the call on that one because I've seen a lot of maps where you've done it, group, personal, one-on-one -on -one and community. So how would you like to structure? Well, let's just keep the same thing, but we just move it down and go, if the personal is the aptitude for forgiveness, then we just put the gentle glowing acceptance at the bottom. How's that? So we keep everything you got, we just move it over one. How's that? So is the group space the finale? Yeah. So it goes personal as current yeah. and one, one as next and community and... Yeah. I think it... Um, yeah, or we could just change those and have the, because I in my mindset, I was more thinking of them in terms of that order of week one, week two, week three, week four. Right. More, more than the actual relation to the group and the personal. And the... Right. Okay. So you're saying it's okay or not okay? Um, like we can make this week, can be, we can change it to personal and one-on-one and, -on -one and community and group, but I think maybe the intention should stay anchored in the... Oh, okay. So the, so it's still gentle, glowing acceptance in the personal space. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Mm -hmm. I like that. That looks like it. Yeah. So Is that because, yeah, I've been just entering into creating with that intention so far and it's been really really helpful to like um enter into ease and like a more easeful creation state well i definitely would love to be in a more easeful creation state in the community space and the forgiveness with one-on-one -on -one and the gentle glowing acceptance in the group would be loving for you i got that Okay, do you have anything to add, uh, Samantha? Um, where I've been this week is uh, in a in a celebration of of creative collective space. Um, and riding the waves of, of uh, balancing out um, personal space. Yeah, because I, what I was saying before Jordan came in, like I had a, we had our first uh, Creatrix Collective event where 38 people were there and um, it was really successful and that was really great. 
and uh, it was like super, super energizing, super like giving a lot of like um, of high energy. And then I, and then afterwards, I'm just noticing I'm like in facilitation of like group energy of really needing to make sure that I take um, time for one-on-one -on -one space right afterwards in relation to spaces and energy that's that could be my contribution as when we're all working on um facilitating and holding space for people to make sure that we we uh do certain exercises that create um like a supportive uh compassionate boundary and then do like a cleansing exercise like going into nature walking in nature having your own time mm -hmm. yeah super important yeah so and, sorry keep going oh sorry and la last week so there was a group event and then my personal event was shadow work so I did polarities, a workshop on polarities, and we brought people to a uh, like lower, lower frequency side of themselves and then birthed into the idea was the metaphor of the, which we talked about last week of the, the butterfly, the metamorphosis of the butterfly. Um, and there were a lot of people that had a breakthrough, but felt quite sensitive about it. So I, beforehand, I, I made sure to tell them that this was going to be a deep process. And then afterwards, I held space for an individual. We had a conversation. And so then I, I don't know, sorry. Now I'm like, well, why did I mention this? Oh, and this week, this week I'm going, the, the next workshop is on your dreams. So the evolution is like from the shadow, then we can actually really like look at where we're at or what's stopping us and then really like imbue a bunch of energy into that. And so we're not repressing it. So it's not just coming out in all these like ways. We're more conscientious of like what we're manifesting. So the next one's uh, the dreamscape as a continuation. So like, what do you want to dream your reality to be? Um, and I guess from my front, it's been a lot of like intuition of like vibing, like feeling what's going on in the collective and then um, deciding on the themes. Yeah. Where am I? I think that in the design process, there's two major ways to go. And one is like if you're an architect, we have a blueprint and just sort of like what Jordan and I are sort of merging in our blueprints. And then you start from there versus what you just said, uh, like if there's a park and people are walking in the park over a period of a year, they, they go down certain pathways and you, you don't design it first, you watch to see where they go, and then you sort of pave over the pathways, just sort of like, again, seeing what the group needs in the moment and it emerges and then you just go with what is there. And I think those two design modes can work together. Sometimes you just didn't want to work. Right? Sometimes it's a very fixed, facilitated process that you're taking them through. And sometimes it's just a very intuitive uh, go to the need of the moment. Because a facilitator or designer for such uh, experiences, that's important to distinguish those and to sort of know which one you're in and which one the other one is in. Because if we're designing together and we're trying to come up with something, some people like me sometimes I have a very fixed format that I like to use. And other people may have, you know, very spontaneous approach. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's it's a difference in the feminine and the masculine again. <laughs> yeah. um, intuition versus uh, the the structure. They're both very useful. And I guess I would ask, like, what what do you see my well, the like, contribution in this? Because I've been kind of like working on the sensing ventures and doing this creatrix collective. Um, and I, I feel like I have a really good intuitive sense and that's how I, I work. Um, and then there's a lot of like, uh, there has been a lot of back work of like Jordan and I, when Jordan was here, 
um, we were doing more, but we've been kind of like working on our own things for like just creating space for healing and things like that. And so, yeah, I'm uh, interested in, in um, where you see the connection. Well, I, I think something that's coming through pretty strong is, is a, an idea I've had for quite a while. And it's being in the Sunshine Coast in the forest, in a very bossy place at Crystal Creek, and having 144 people go through a weekend. And to have 12 facilitators, each with a space in the forest, each with a part of the story, each with them facilitating mm -hmm. the gift that they want, and to take groups of 12 through, I'm not sure, got to figure maybe a two or three hour experience or maybe it might be it may be enough. So during the weekend that they experience everybody. So it's like, say it goes for two hours, wake up in the morning, some breakfast go, and let's say nine to 11. Um, everyone, like we have a map, everyone goes to a specific spot, there's a timer and boom, you know, the, the facilitator has them for two hours. Then you take them through the experience and we, we mapped out the whole thing. So at some point, everyone is going through each piece of the puzzle. And at the end of it, we have, let's say, a shared knowledge community. At the end of it, we have this group of 144 people that we just took through this tremendous experience that has you know, dance party Saturday night, probably Friday night, and you know, rituals and storytelling and it's in costume, it's in the forest, and it's in a beautiful place with a beautiful energy. And I'm gonna be going to Sunshine Coast soon and start to check out the land, get the people on the Sunshine Coast ready, um, start to figure out, because uh, a lot of the pieces have come in. There's a guy who's got this incredible music soundscape and he can go the whole weekend. Um, he's another brother, you know, he's another. You know. and, and that's, you know, I know Jordan, you're, we're all very interested in the music side. That's, we have to sort of work on that, right? Of how, how to do that. I mean, I just, I seen these festivals where they have DJs every hour, two hours, and 80% of them I don't even like. And I, I would like a, like in the forest, this beautiful soundscape that shapes through the whole weekend and moves in, in ways that, you know, I think are incredible. So that's a, that's a big deal. I, I would just like, I have the idea of a design, an event that I just want to do. Part of it's going to be collective and part of it isn't. Part of it is there's going to be a strict design. And uh, I, you know, for sure that both you are two of the 12 facilitators. And part of this will be kind of getting ready to go there and do it and to figure out how to get the people and uh, costs and yeah. do all that. So that's a, that's a big thing that's come through. That sounds really exciting. Um, we had a medicine box as a DJ and uh -huh. he was um, amazing mm -hmm. world electro like the way that he brought people up like I was sweating like I was at, at home at zoom on zoom like he and he's really like humble like he's just like about the you know the experience he's like was very connected to everyone energetically um and he lives on the sunshine coast too Oh, does he? No, no, I, I know Medicine Fox quite well, and he's a yeah. So I, um, an elemental rhythm, I love. So, I mean, anyway, that's that's open for much, much discussion. It's the music side, so I don't want to stop certain things from occurring. That's exciting. Uh, I've also, I've, I've got two planetary guardian teams now, right, that are going. A third one's about to start probably two more within the week. So I'm hoping to have one per day of training a four person team. And it's basically one of the, the aims is looking to teach people how to make hundred an hour online. So mm. you pay 25, the facilitator makes a hundred, very simple mathematics, and then you teach them something. And for me, I'm, I'm giving them a, a map for session. So it's like for planetary guardians, just looking at our minimum wage when we're working at hundred an hour. So that should be a good incentive to become a planetary guardian <laughs> because it's a lot better than a lot of people. Very cool. Is there a way we can follow with the groups that are being activated? 
I have them, it's all filmed, so at some point, pretty soon, I'll, I'll load them up and show you, and you can, to your heart's consent, you can watch them. Because, I mean, it's, it's uh, to me, it's like the winning formula. Like so much of this world is financially based, and so many people are kind of screwed, and a lot of people are employed, and uh, everyone thinks you gotta go to school for t four years to, to, to make some money, and it's not true. You know, you just have to figure out uh, how to give good value and to charge reasonable price. And right now in Zoom, there are four people in here for an hour, and it's very reasonable for you 25, and you give them a map. You give them something like the five spaces map, right, which changes their life. And so the two groups right now, they're psyched, very psyched. Yay. One is at Yorkton, and they have a learning center, it's with Lori Renton, who has used my value system for joining her business, a financial services business, for over 10 years and swears by it, loves it. So she's one of the few people over the years that has had a legitimate business that has been using the inflow matrix to some degree. And she has a building in Yorkton. She's very well known. She's, she's, she's an incredible woman. And uh, she's got three uh, people with her. And then there's another team in Victoria, uh, a man I met at our eco village. And he's, they want to create a kind of community. And they have a very dynamic earth-based relationship and they have other plans so it's basically everyone does what it's, it's using the tools to create what you want to create together and you know zoom like it's just so simple it's just like just like what you're doing you have 38 people i mean once you master the online art of, of, of teaching it's basically unlimited you know for you, you, all of us can work out of our laptop and, and then move around to the most beautiful places on the planet. Uh, have a time where you go to your tech, you, you make your money, and then the rest of the time you'll be in the forest and do whatever the heck you want, right? Mm -hmm. Good it's job. Totally. Oh, another thing. I just got in touch with the Rev. So right now, there's been a lot of people I've been out of connection with, uh, out of harmony with, or just waiting for whatever I'm doing to get to the point where I can go to people and go, it's happening, this is it, this is how you do it, this is what we're doing. And so now uh, going back to key players, and one of them is on the Sunshine Coast is the Rev. He's <laughs> the Reverend Mark Lemon. Yeah. And we, we spent quite a lot of time together. He got inflow matrixed and he's an ex-priest through third generation. His uh, grandfather went into Northern uh, Ontario Live with the First Nations, and he's he's got a huge history. Whoa! When he was on the priest on the Sunshine Coast, he had a quantum uh, uh, which would bring in all the new paradigm thinkers, and so he was bringing in other worldviews. He wasn't your ordinary priest, and he's a beautiful man, a great sense of humor, and me and him just laugh. Basically, when we're together we're laughing most of the time, and uh, so I reconnected with him. I'm going to go out and see him start to lay the groundwork for getting the land ready, getting the people ready that I know there, because there's some very powerful people on the Sunshine Coast mm -hmm. uh, that uh, are great healers and facilitators. So. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Good work. It would be so cool to like have a, to really launch the shows and start seeing the journey and all the people that you're connecting with and their stories and be able to basically like follow your work and the planetary guardians and all the different teams that are being activated and each member of those teams and we're going to be able to really like follow their story and connect and have a real personal connection with them and their energy what, what they're creating in their world for sure that's just seems super super exciting to to be moving into closer to that place well it's it's to be around psyched humans that are, you know, creating like, I mean, I'm, I'm in awe that you had 38 people and had that experience online. I mean, that's, that's a huge win. I'm, I'm working with Tauruses. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> we've been, George and I were talking about before you left. I'm like, babe, we need some earth signs in this mix. We've been dreaming for days, baby. <laughs> you need the, <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah, Pablo and Megan, I don't know if you've met them. They they do a lot of static dance. Uh, they've been really, really great in, uh, in uh, like, I came up with the idea of the Creatrix Collective, and then they're like, 
yeah, and then doing it and really beautiful uh, like presentation and advertising and like they have a big community. They have like lots of people. I feel like Taurus energy are really, it's a, it's a good energy to have in the matrix because they're creative, but they're also like do the work. Right. Um, so uh, yeah, we can connect them as well. And like, I, I love this idea of this big party in the forest. Yeah. Uh, have you been to Crystal Creek? Like, do you know, right above uh, Roberts Creek? I don't know if I have, I have, I don't know. I don't think so. Just, just imagine the forest with basically a full moss floor and I'll, you know, I'll go there ahead of time and I'm going to remove every twig, everything that hits you in the eye and <laughs> on the ground, you know, for the entire space. And then it's got some old growth in it. It's, it, it has a history of a very, you know, ceremonial uh, high end things occurring there. And I was there and had this a beautiful experience in this forest. And it was almost kind of like said, okay, bring me in, bring me in. And there, it's funny because in the middle of the forest is this door. And it's, it's just kind of in the middle of the forest, just a door. And it's, that's the thing that is, you know, it's the portal, you know, it's the magic. Yeah. It's a place that the magic is, is there waiting for humans to uh, come in and a little bit of a different way. And so that's what I'd like us to do is to bring back the magic and, and just have the best time of our lives, basically. Because think about it, all these people inside, they've been disconnected, they're not connecting, and, and you're going to need something, right? You're going to need something to, to, to get us back on, on track and get, get the fear out. Yeah. I really love it that it's in this like beautiful spiritual forest, like we're like super grounding energy and like nurturing. That's going to be really, really important to, to get people back to connecting. Cause like if we have a huge party, then there can, they, people can go off and, and rest in nature and be by a tree if they're feeling a little overwhelmed. Cause that probably will happen, you know? For sure. Cool. So, <laughs> what about you, Giordino? How was your progress with all your work? I love you too. It's coming. There's a special balance between rhythm and pace. And um, my life has really been spent developing a rhythm that I could be fluent in, in expressing myself. And the pace is something that's kind of been left off my plate of awareness for the majority of my life. And it's something that I've always been challenged with and I've always seen as a stranger to myself. And um, I'm working now with the four weeks. So it's good I got the clarity on how we're structuring with personal, then one-on-one, -on -one, then community, then group space. Um, because I've got a handle, for the most part, on integrating, um, like interlacing the days of the week. So Monday wants to act in a way. Monday wants to accomplish some things, like more like playfully and musically and and um, artistically. And then Tuesday wants to get more to like, let's sort the files, let's get organized. But Monday doesn't want to do that. So it's not like they're each creating their own separate thing, all five, because I'm working with uh, basically creating characters of the Monday through Friday. And each one of them plays a part in creating all together. But in that way, the four weeks are also co-creating. And yesterday in particular, I pushed myself really hard. And um, I, I kind of tortured myself, really. I was just in this place of like 
you're not doing good enough and I feel stressed and I'm like looking at what is completion what is accomplishment and it's just like I had these expectations but I wasn't allowing time to basically be a friend to me I wasn't allowing like the other days to support me the other weeks to support me and I took all the weight of having to co-create everything or to, to create everything by myself when it should have been a when it's supposed to be a neatly delegated um, co-creation. And so really coming into a powerful place of pace in terms of what is it that I, what is the energy that is calling me to connect? Where am I connecting to my essence here? And if I feel like I'm overwhelming myself with obligation out of some like, fantasized expectation I need to really let go of that experience and just embrace what I know not what I think I need to do but what I know I need to do which is really show up for who I am and not who I think I am so we're just coming into a really centered place and that's why we have um um, our intention is activating balanced attunement. I, I think that the uh, such a great monthly theme for everybody, right? Activating balanced attunement. Mm. And then to break it down the way you did with gentle glowing acceptance, aptitude for forgiveness, reminder of ease, and gentle glowing acceptance. Aptitude, forgiveness, reminder of ease, and play of grace, and gentle glowing acceptance. Well, that's, uh, I love those. I, love those. Mm -hmm. I, you know, you got a lot on your plate, and I find that when you get lost in the maps, it's, you know, a lot of that is the mind, right? A lot of that is, it's kind of like at some point, you know, you stop thinking about the music, you stop thinking about it, you just play it, right? I'm such a good musician. I might suggest for you to maybe make some, I don't know if you're making a lot of music, but maybe write some songs. I write a lot. I do write a lot of music. That's kind of my savior right now. Uh, but if it's, not, if it's not musical, then it's kind of, I feel just dead in the water. Is it, I would also say that, you know, it, different times in my life, like twice, I took all my maps and I burned them. I remember taking every, <laughs> everything on the wall, everything, everywhere, <laughs> and I put it in yes. my backpack, I walked to the ocean, and I burned them, and I just said, fuck it, because it was too difficult, there's so many different ways to do it, and I, I, I just couldn't figure it out, and there was new things coming in all the time, and I couldn't get the old things, I, I, I couldn't integrate it, I couldn't attune, and I just, you know, I, I said, Please give it to me simply. Like, let me have, let me have this. Not, I don't want to try to figure it out. Just have it come through, kind of. And, you know, again, like to burn all evil work is, is, is if you're working years on this stuff. You're attached to it. You love it. You know, and, but the truth of, as you say, what you know, isn't going away. And sometimes, you know, you got to get rid of everything and then create the blank slate and then just start a new map or just, you know, I love putting everything away and starting over and, and just say, okay, if, if I didn't know anything, what comes through? And then another map comes in, of course. And then that's the map. <laughs> but it's, it's, you know, it's the process because it, like when you have all the information around you, it's affecting you and it's not organized right. If it's not aesthetically right, if it's not doing everything you want right. You know, it can, it can irritate. Sometimes we need some Zen. Sometimes we need to, and I think, you know, we, we need the balance of the feminine and, and the physical and the pleasure and the touch and the movement and the expression. So for you, you know, I know that when we isolate and there's a pressure to kind of create that thing you are trying to create, right? But man, I've been doing 25 years. I mean, you're way ahead of me. <laughs> and, and, you, and you have very, a lot of coherence with what you have. But uh, just watch the traps. Mm -hmm. You're spending a lot of time alone. And, um, 
there are traps right behind them. <laughs> totally. And then being able to like through through magic, basically, be able to have um, powers of perception to be able to have awareness and discernment around when you're falling into a trap, you know, to be able to be able to balance when you're taking a road that's like, is this where is this what I want? Is this like what's healthy right now? And then just to be able to catch yourself if you're, you know, destabilizing. Meditate. Feel into your body. <laughs> um my uh my roommate he led us on a, a half a yoga experience this morning and i've been doing like <gasps> kundalini kundalini it's like fire 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 i'm i am kundalini and i was like like even in this meeting i just feel like i'm like oh i can listen better this is better why i'm bringing this up is that the, these different like embodied technologies are really brilliant in sometimes when we're feeling like all the all the planning and all the maps and things like that it's come back to your breath into your heart and just take some moments to like breathe deeply And sometimes though that like it's not safe in our body too and it brings up a lot so uh, a little feminine embodied somatic nugget yeah with pace and ease the breathing and the embodiment is important even though it can feel uncomfortable in if we've been running so fast. I think we'd be coming to the, the end of this. I'm not sure where you guys are at, but if you want to do a part two or if we're fine with having an ending at the natural ending of this Zoom call. How are you guys? I feel good. Yeah, it was really nice to touch in, and that feels much more grounded. Hey, if, if we if we had if we gave this show a name, what would the name be for the three of us? The Apocalypse Committee. Apocalypse Committee. Okay, committee. That's the name of the show. I like it. What, Jordan? I would call it what you said, the the progression towards ease. <laughs> the goal, the dream. It kind of, it, that, that, that's implied in Apocalypse Committee. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I, 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 I put a vote for the Apocalyptic Committee. Oh, whatever, boys club, fine. Let's have an apocalypse committee. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm having fun. Okay. <laughs> what I'll do is I'll make a Facebook page um, and pop all the videos in that me and you have done, Jordan, and the ones that we have done, and then mm. take it to the next level of uh, the branding or show or whatever. How's that sound? Very cool. Yeah, let me take a. I want to just take a photo of this right now. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> now I'm uh, now I'm a boy too. That's for always being chill. That's a good. Oh, do you want here's some inflow matrix outflow matrix stuff. You got these panels here, and then you got these runways over here. I, I work with Tuesday in the middle because Tuesday is like the
the, my planetary guardians today. Uh -huh. So Tuesday, the leader of the group with uh, Monday on my left and Friday on my right. And then Thursday on Monday's left and Wednesday on Friday's right. <laughs> so we all move together as a group. I love it. Reorganize the entire week. If they're going to get confused, they're going to <laughs> Okay, I'm going to bring it to a natural close because it's about to end. Uh, this is the Apocalyptic Committee saying goodbye. We're getting close to our show, getting formatted. This is uh, Captain Sweet and... Sam Witch. And... as well. And we will see you next week. Thank you for tuning in. Much love to everybody. Take care.